in nights like this are rare. It makes me stop and wonder where the time goes. I swear I'll never know where all the time Services line out of forecast, of course, with the. You're drinks. from Dallas, aren't you? <laughs> hey, uh, you seem to have gotten a little bit ahead on the uh, parking valet situation. Your pre Columbian side seems to be lacking an adequate survival assistance. Well, I'm the parking valet. Let's <laughs> well, right on, budget. Well, good. Well, now, here's your off. Oh, <laughs> They didn't have any caviar. They just had this meat on a stick. Honey, <laughs> where's the meat? Big dog came and got it. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? They always do that. It's some sort of ritual or something. I think they worship the moon. Excuse me, could I squeeze in here? Sure. It's kind of crowded tonight, isn't it? Oh, move down. Move down. Move down. Hello, hello. Thank you for being here this evening. We're so glad to see you. Thank you very much. Just a couple of things before we start. As always, the bathrooms are here up on the hill. And if you need beer or wine, the bar is over here. So please settle back and enjoy the show. It'll be starting in just a second. Thank you. the Oak Acres barbecue here in far west Fort Worth. He has seven acres of land behind it, and one day about three years ago, the hip pocket folks asked him if he'd like an outdoor theater on it, and he said, sure. We're in the midst of trees and a, a grassy field, and we've just set the theater right down in the heart of that. <laughs> The Hip Pocket stage looks like one of those modern creative playgrounds, and seven-year-old Lake Simons, daughter of the Hip Pocket's founders, uses it as one. The lighting is rigged with coffee cans. The dressing room used to be a stable, but at night, at dress rehearsal, those coffee cans perk up, and the primitive stage is... ...transformed before your very unbelieving eyes into the glory and magnificence of... ...the Comedia! In this case, a new version of the Pinocchio story, done in the style of 16th century Italian theater, Commedia dell'arte. There's actors, there's people doing mime, dance, media, music, you know, a combination of all kinds of elements that go to make the whole thing. In other words, lots of different ways to tell a story. What will you call this wooden head? 
His name shall be Pinocchio. The five-year-old hip pocket spent $20,000 last season and just about broke even. Founder Johnny Simons and his wife Deanne have built what they consider a loyal and broad audience for their PG-rated theatrical experiments, and they're happy. And people say, why don't you go to Los Angeles? Why don't you go to New York? And we're very, really uh, pleased to be here doing what we do. is all right. In this original satire by Johnny Simons and Douglas Ballantyne, it's opening night at Casa Manana. Before showtime, everyone is in place except Ruta. She's still in her dressing room with a tall, dark visitor. By strange coincidence and the author's inventive imaginations, Charlie Chan takes the case to find the missing Ruta. Gene Woods is Chan, and Lou Hancock plays Ruta. And where did Harry Ape take the unsinkable Ruta? On top of Casa's aluminum dome, that's where. Oh, I don't like the way you say that, Harry. I see. Well, am I your hostage or something? Or what do you want from me? Oh, well. The satirical musical plays outdoors under the stars on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday nights through September 21st. The Hip Pocket Theater is near Lake Worth. It's off the 820 North Loop on Las Vegas Trail North. If you've never spent a starry evening sitting in the middle of a cow pasture, sipping a cold drink, and watching an original musical comedy, you owe it to yourself to go to Fort Worth's Hip Pocket Theater. Right now, you'll see Hearts of the City, a romantic yarn about a Fort Worth junk man. Ragman Macduff and his dog Buck spend hot summer days searching through garbage cans and dempster dumpsters. They spend melancholy nights dreaming of a new life in Alaska. When their friend and housemate Tulip gets mixed up with Sonny, a Vietnam vet with a drug habit, Ragman and Buck decide it's time to split. They hit the highway with their 15-inch TV and hitch a ride with a hayseed headed to Dallas's farmer's market. About the same time that Ragman and Buck arrive in Big D, Sonny lands in Huntsville. The twin tales of escape, one from the plastic prison of big city life and the other from a chain gang, both merge for a happy ending at Six Flags. Much of the nonstop rock score is sung by composer Douglas Ballantyne, a pianist with the storytelling style of Leon Russell. But this is not just a case of Motown meets Cowtown. Writer-director Johnny Simons has staged Hearts of the City with a most sophisticated sleight of hand, always making the most of his ramshackle treehouse setting. And the scenic projections are among the most artful I've seen in years. The hip pocket serves up an eccentric, highly theatrical kind of mulligan stew. Actors, sets, costumes, and lights are all crazily improvised. And they're all secondary to the original scripts and scores they serve. The result is pure, homegrown, meat and potatoes theater. Hearty, unpretentious, and every bit of it made from scratch. Live, elegantly sung soft rock, country, and reggae, all original by Douglas Ballantyne, a hilarious, confusing, silly story by Johnny Simons, and incredibly clever costumes by Deanne Simons, and sets by Adrian Martinez. Hip Pocket's latest show is an off-the-wall original. It makes no sense, but it is totally understandable. And all I can say is that I felt more like I was in a theater out there than I often do at the fancier summer productions, because the energy and the fun is so infectious. <laughs> Sex Kittens Go to College has a risque title, but what happens on stage at the hip pocket is funny and not very naughty. But it purports to be a lurid expose of higher education behind the scenes. It's narrated by a wild-eyed TV newsman named Ozzy Wazoo, wonderfully acted and danced by Alan Mintz. Miss Tooth and Miss Towns will serve as barometers in order that we be constantly reminded of our sense of duty to maintain some semblance of decency in the proceedings of this made-for-TV 3D movie report to the nation.
is the disgusting Dean Bean, Dean of the College by day, kidnapper of co-eds by night. And the catfish are still dancing in the lake near the college, despite the scandalous goings on. And the Dean faints when he tries to say the words panty raid, and the coach has to revive him while his learned faculty looks on. And the Dean recovers and takes his secretary, Miss Fang, who loves him passionately, for a picnic and makes small talk. Didn't you ever see the naked jungle with Chuck Heston? The naked jungle? Yeah, with Charlton Heston and some red-headed woman. And back on campus, everybody celebrates because the kidnapped co-eds mysteriously reappear. And Dean Bean goes straight and marries Miss Fang, and the celebrations continue. Richard Harris plays Dean Bean, and he's a riot. One thing about the hip pocket, things may look chaotic on stage, but there is a slick and well-rehearsed order to it all. From lighting to costume changes to dancing and music, this is a smooth show. But there is still a sense of danger on that stage, a sense that anything can happen, and that is live theater at its best. Jane Horwitz, Channel 8 News. And live in Fort Worth, in the same absurd vein, we have the Hip Pocket Theater's newest original musical, Sex Kittens Go to College, a satirical documentary look at college romance in the days of house mothers and panty raids, narrated by a fellow named Ozzy Wazoo, played by Alan Mintz. And Miss Downs will serve as barometers in order that we be constantly reminded of our sense of duty to maintain some semblance of decency in the proceedings of this made-for-TV 3D movie report to the nation. The real star is the college's Dean, Dean Bean, played by Richard Harris. Dean Bean has a secret vice in which he becomes Stink Bean, a lascivious fellow who captures co-eds and tickles them. Meanwhile, our commentator falls in love with a co-ed himself. Cause I'm glory bound, you see. So I Hello, Mr. and Mrs. America and all the ships at sea. Let's go to press flash. Hip Pocket Theater, fresh from their triumphant return from Edinburgh's International Theater Festival and from London's Queen Elizabeth Hall, is proudly presenting Even If You Can Stop the Yellow Claw, My Deadly Tidal Wave Will Still Destroy New York, Part 2. Performing Friday, Saturday, and Sunday through Halloween. Call 246-1269 to see comic book characters. Meet 1940s Radio. Now playing at Hip Pocket Theater near you. Don't miss it. Near? Well, closer than Scotland. Oh.